Hi folks. In today's video, we're going to go over concepts and calculations involving average and marginal propensities to save and consume. And these are just really fancy terms for the likelihood or the propensity that will either save income or will consume income. If we're talking about additional pieces of income, then we would be talking about marginal concepts. If we're just talking about absolute income and that ratio, then we would be talking about um, average propensities. So hopefully by the end of the video you'll get to know acronyms like APC, APS, MPC, and MPS a little bit better. And these are acronyms and concepts that tend to throw AP students off when they're taking their macro examination. But honestly, the concepts aren't extremely difficult to get your mind wrapped around and the calculations involved are pretty simple. Let's get started. Let's imagine that you've got a significant amount of money sitting around in a bank account. If you've already paid your taxes, the money left in the bank is all yours to do with whatever you want to do. We would call that amount of money that you have remaining after you've paid your taxes your disposable income. And we use the abbreviation DI to designate that. You do have a bit of a problem though because now you have to decide what to do with your additional money. If you're John Maynard Keynes, the British economist who really developed a lot of the theories that we're discussing in macroeconomics, you would say there's only two things that you could do with your money. You could spend it or save it. If we take the amount of money that you spend and divide it by the amount of your disposable income, we would have what economists would call your average propensity to consume, or APC. If you decide to save some of it, then we take the amount of money that you saved and we divide it by the, your disposable income and we would have what economists would call your average propensity to save or APS. So, average propensity to consume is simply consumption C divided by disposable income DI. Average propensity to save is simply S savings divided by disposable income DI. Simple, huh? Let's continue with our hypothetical situation. So let's say we're walking along a beach and you see a dollar half buried in the sand. Let's say that you pick it up. That's the dollar of additional income for you. Now, being an economist means being a little obsessed with the idea of marginalism. You remember that concept, right? All right then, well, let's apply that concept to the dollar of additional income that you have just earned. What do you do with it? Well, again, if you're John Maynard Keynes, you're going to save some of it and you're going to spend some of it. The portion of your additional income that you spent divided by the change in your disposable income is what economists would call your marginal propensity to consume. The proportion that you saved of that dollar would, uh, if we took that amount, that, that change in savings and divided it by the change in your disposable income, then we would get what economists would call your marginal propensity to save. Marginal propensity to consume is MPC. Marginal propensity to save is MPS. Alright, now let's imagine that we're not just analyzing you, but we're analyzing every single person in the nation. That's what these calculations are really about. They're aggregate calculations or total calculations involving an entire nation. So, to get our average propensity to consume, or APC, we would take consumption of a nation divided by the disposable income in that nation. If we wanted APS, we would take the savings in a nation and we would divide that by its disposable income. For marginal propensity to consume, or MPC, we would take the change in consumption and we would divide it by the change in disposable income. If we wanted to figure out the marginal propensity to save, or MPS, we would take the change in savings and we would divide it by the change in disposable income. Now, these are formulas that, unfortunately, you do kind of have to commit to memory, but I'm hoping that they're pretty easy to remember. Let's illustrate with an example. Let's say that Americans this year in 2011 combined to earn $50 billion more than they earned last year in 2010. And as a result, they spent $400 billion more dollars this year than they did last year. So, what is the MPC? Well, we would take the change in consumption, which is $400 billion, and we would divide it by the change in income, $500 billion, and we would get an MPC of 0 
Well, what does that mean? Well, that would mean for every dollar of additional income earned, Americans would spend 80 cents and they would save 20 cents. Did you get that? If there's only two things that we can do with additional income, then and we know our MPC, all we have to do is take the unit of additional income, in this case, let's say $1, and subtract the 80 cents that we would spend on consumption, and that we would then we would get the 20 cents, and that represents savings, and that's actually also our MPS. Okay, a few final words about MPC and MPS, because these are the two variables that you're very likely to see on the AP examination. You really don't see a lot of questions about average propensity to consume and average propensity to save. It's mostly the marginal topics that are tested. They're highly related to the Keynesian model that we've discussed earlier and that we're going to be discussing again in class. Because both involve the examination of additional units of income and because we have assumed that households can either spend or save, then it must be true that MPC plus MPS is equal to 1 and that MPC is equal to 1 minus MPS and that MPS is equal to 1 minus the MPC. Now, I need you to remember these simple ideas because we shall be using them uh, in our next lesson, which is called the multiplier effect. We'll see you then.